more than half of Europe, including a dozen or more members of NATO and of the European Union, would be only partially sovereign and required to seek the Kremlin's approval before inviting any military personnel from NATO countries onto their soil. The Czech Republic, at the very heart of Europe, hundreds of miles from Russia, would have to ask the Kremlin for permission if she wanted to invite a company of German infantry to join an exercise or even to help with flood defences. There is nothing new about large and powerful nations using the threat of brute force to terrify reasonable people into giving way to otherwise completely unacceptable demands. But if President Putin were to choose the path of bloodshed and destruction, he must realise that it would be both tragic and futile. And nor should we allow him to believe that he could easily take some smaller portion of Ukraine to salami slice because the resistance will be ferocious. Anyone who has been to Kiev, as I have, and stood by the wall of remembrance, studied the portraits of nearly 4,500 Ukrainians who have died in defence of their country since 2014. The total death toll stands in excess of 14,000. Anyone who has been there will know that the Ukrainians are determined to fight and have become steadily more skilled at guerrilla warfare. And if Russia pursues this path, many Russian mothers' sons will not be coming home. And the response in the international community would be the same, and the pain that will be inflicted on the Russian economy will be the same. 